Hello, my name is Eric Lawrence, the developer of Fiddler. In this demonstration, we're going to show the Quick Exec feature of Fiddler. Quick Exec is a simple box that runs below the session list. You can get to it in Fiddler by pressing Alt Q. And outside of Fiddler, if you hit the hotkeys Control Alt F, it will activate Fiddler from, where, from whence you can actually go directly to the Quick Exec box. So, now that you know how to get there, what can you do? The Quick Exec box is essentially a command line that allows you to perform many commands in Fiddler or launch other applications and t perform other tasks. You can learn more about the Quick Exec box by typing help. When you type help, it will launch a browser showing help about the Quick Exec feature, including, and importantly, the command list. The command list supports a wide variety of commands, mostly used to manipulate the session list here. For instance, you can quickly select any number of sessions. So one of my favorite features is the question mark operator. The question mark operator is special. When you type question mark, essentially it's going to select in the session list URLs that match. So if I type dot you can see that anything that contained a dot in the URL is selected, P and G. Now I've filtered down to the PNGs. If I hit enter, focus will go to the session list, and then the operation is easy to undertake, for instance, hitting delete to delete from the session list. So question mark is a special operator. By default, most of the operators in Quick Exec are actually specified in your rules file. So if you click onto the rules tab plugin, or if you click rules, customize rules to open the Fiddler script editor, you can scroll down and you can see the quick exec function. It's called on quick exec. So if we scroll all the way down on here, you have on exec action. Sorry, not on quick exec. On exec action gets called and is passed an array containing the string parameters of the command. Most of these operators take place on future requests. So for instance, I can bold anything containing Microsoft, and then if I open Microsoft's website, you will see that anything coming from Microsoft is actually bolded, and those requests not coming from Microsoft are not bolded. As with most operators that are built into the rules file by default, if you type the command and no, no following specifier, it disables it. So bold enter will just actually clear bolding for all future requests. So now if we refresh the Microsoft page, you'll see that this time none of the requests are bolded. Bold is a very simple operator. Now, there are several operators organized around manipulating breakpoints. Breakpoints in Fiddler allow you to stop and tamper with requests or responses. So by default, there are a number of rules. One of them is BPS, breakpoint on status. And if we BPS on 404, basically, if there's a request for a file that does not exist, Fiddler will actually stop. So let's go to open a browser, and then let's open a site that does not exist. No such site. Well, let's actually pick something a little better. Microsoft.com, whack, no such site you'll see that Fiddler is actually breakpointed on this session because the response status is 404. So let's run that to completion, and you'll see it's there. Now, if we were to create a rule like BPS on 200, breakpoint on status 200, what you'll find is that quite a few sites will actually enter the, the debugger. So if we actually run to completion on the home page, you're going to start to see these requests start to accumulate. Well, if you want to make them all complete without actually waiting for any prompt, simply hit G. G will take any sessions that are currently at a breakpoint and run them directly to completion. This is very useful for a number of debugging tasks where you're interested in a wide variety of responses, but not many others. Now, let's actually remove that BPS so that there's no breakpoint on status. Now, if we want to clear our session list, we can just type CLS for clear. You can create request breakpoints on URL using BPU. So BPU for, say, .js is going to create a breakpoint on a request for any URL. 
Let's clear our cache and then go back to the Microsoft web page and hit refresh. You'll see that this JS file is now broken because we've breakpointed on URL. You'll notice specifically that this is a request breakpoint, so I can edit the headers of the request and I can choose to run to completion here. Let's just hit G to make that go. And in fact, let's actually just remove that BPU request, BPU, with blank. Now, if you want to make the response break, so rather than breaking on the request, you want to go directly to the response breakpoint, type BP after, meaning breakpoint after this particular request type. So let's cho choose BP after CSS. So now that we've breakpointed after CSS, you'll see that here we're actually now at a response breakpoint and we can modify the response in any way that we'd like and choose to run to completion. So let's t type BP after with nothing in it to clear it. Okay, there are a few other commands that you can use. Most of these are for just convenience's sake if you don't remember the hotkeys for them. So you can type stop. Stop will actually stop Fiddler from capturing requests. Start will start capturing again. If you type show, it will cause Fiddler to be visible, but that one actually is a little non-intuitive because obviously if Fiddler is not visible, you can't type it. Well, the reason for this is there's actually a tool that runs on the command line called uh, execaction. execaction.exe is available from the Fiddler website and it allows you to actually integrate quick exec commands into a batch file or other automated testing framework. Well, while that's, we're not going to show that here, you can also type hide. Hide will actually show, fit, will hide Fiddler in the system status tray. If you hit control alt f, we're going to bring Fiddler back from its hidden selection. Now, there are a variety of other interesting commands. For instance, we can select, and select works on content type. So when we type select, and for instance, text slash HTML, we should see in the, the, the session list that those sessions that are content type text HTML have been selected. Again, if we um, actually, if we want to do something like image, we can do a select image whack and just select the images. If we're only interested in, for instance, the GIF files, select image whack GIF, and you'll see that 15 image files have been selected. If we hit shift tab to select the session list, we can then easily operate on those by, for instance, deleting them. Now, there's another command which is kind of interesting, which is all but or keep only. And what this does is it will remove all of the sessions that are not of the content type of interest. So if, for instance, you were interested in script files, so like this JavaScript file here, what you can do is you can see that, hey, this is a content type of application x dash JavaScript, and what we're going to do is we're going to remove all but JavaScript. And you'll see now that the only sessions remaining are script files. And now we've got a download back background update from Firefox here, which we'll, we'll remove. Lastly, and this is one of the more interesting ones, we have a function called URL replace. URL replace replaces a string from a target URL or from a, from a source URL and replaces it with a target URL. So if, for instance, we wanted to re URL replace hmm, maybe uh, Microsoft with fiddled, as you can see down here, we're going to replace Microsoft in your eyes with fiddled, and then we go over to the web browser and we go back to live search. And we're going to, in, in the live search box, we're going to search for Microsoft and hit enter. You'll see that what's actually happened is we've actually searched on fiddled because the URL has been automatically changed. This can be used for a variety of purposes, including changing the host names. So if, for instance, you type URL replaced uh, Microsoft with Fiddler tool. What this will do is it will replace Microsoft with Fiddler tool. So if we go to http www.microsoft.com, you'll see that actually you end up on the Fiddler website, although as far as Internet Explorer knows, you're really on the Microsoft website. So this is a very powerful thing because you can quickly do things like URL replace production with the production name of your web server with test name of your web server, and this will actually reroute all requests for your production server to your test server. 
So those are the high level commands that are most interesting for the quick exec box. Of course, you can always add new ones. So if you want to create a new rule in your quick exec, you simply just add the code right here. In the future, you can also see that there will be more and more quick exec rules available through the new extensibility interface called AutoFiddler. AutoFiddler allows you to write native .NET code that will actually run inside the Fiddler request pipeline and re handle requests and responses. And in particular, there's also an on exec action handler that can handle the request from the quick exec box. This is a very powerful way that you can create libraries of actions that are executed out of quick exec. Hope you find this feature useful. If you've got requests for particular things that you'd like to see built into the QuickExec by default, please let me know. Thanks.